All right. Hi, everybody. It is uh, February 19th, and we are just working our way through the material for risk analysis. And after tonight, we actually only have two more classes. Now, tonight, of course, I am uh, Zoom only. We'll record this of so Zoom sync or asynchronous. The next two weeks, um, the next two Mondays, I will be in SM120 and we'll be back to the usual pattern. It's your choice if you want to Zoom, if you want to come face to face, or if you want to uh, watch the Zoom recording asynchronously later on. So I went through everybody's work and I'm missing a couple of things from a couple of people, but overall um, the, 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 um, the submission rate is extremely high and I really appreciate that. I have not yet graded your um, annotated bibliography, but I will do that tomorrow and I'll have your grades posted tomorrow. And then I'll do another quick run through to see if there is anything else that I'm missing. Um, the other thing I did, if you've been following your grade, Moodle's a little bit KG on giving you the proper grades. So I moved, I made sure some things were in the right category. So you may see some differences in calculations as well. But uh, everything should be um, within, within the within where it's supposed to be right now. So having said that, last week, I believe I told you this, I posted an example of a qualitative risk analysis paper. And this was with permission, but one of the one of the students last year, Ronnie Wolf, who is also a Northwest College employee, had written a very good paper um, in a very qualitative way. So this week, uh, starting this week, we have sort of, I want everybody to watch all of this stuff and to read all of this stuff. However, some of you are gonna be doing quantitative risk analysis and some are doing qualitative. And the difference between those two is really, it's really just a matter of how important the numbers are to your analysis. So if you're talking about comparing things, if you're comparing them in a very statistical or numerical way, your paper will be quantitative. For example, one of the classmate, one of your classmates is doing a paper on risks associated with investing in the stock market. Um, that can be an extremely quantitative. You can look at sort of like buying habits and rates of return um, on different things. Uh, and then, or it could be more qualitative, like you can make money, you can lose money. Of course, I'm greatly simplifying that, but, uh, but that's sort of the deal. So there's two lectures, one for quantitative risk analysis, uh, getting into this method section. And then the second one is qualitative. Um, when you do qualitative, you have to sort of think about if you were doing this as a full on research paper for a research class, we would spend some time talking about different um, different theoretical lenses that we would be using to study what we're doing. We're not going to get into that. But this lecture that I gave is about something called discourse analysis, which is a really interesting um it's a really interesting thing to do, but I did a paper on discourse analysis um, using teachers who were teaching social media in, in K-12 schools. And the discourse analysis sort of, it's not really just like listening to two people talk to each other, but it's really like taking that in a particular time and place. And so we're not going to go into it that deeply, but the lecture describes that process of how you... Uh, really get to know what the data means. Now for us in this class, regardless of whether you're doing quant or qualitative research, the data is coming from that literature search that you did from those five sources, um, or if you want more sources, but it's going to be coming from that. So um, so there's not really a, a particular lens that you're going to be looking through, but it's a good way to just sort of think about breaking this down and, and doing, especially when we start talking about the method section and how we're going to do it. So because we've spent a lot of time talking about qualitative um, analysis, I put in some stuff about petroleum reserves and there's just, um, there's, a, there's a lecture and then there's an evaluation of a way to think about this. And here, just to put this really simply, if you think about drilling an oil well, 
Um, the answer is, are you going to, are you going to make money or not? And the question is, are you going to make money or not? And that depends on whether you strike oil, but you never know when you drill an oil well, if you're going to get oil and you don't really know how much. So you can quantify, like maybe there's three different zones that you might hit and you have a 30% chance of one and a 40% chance of another and 10% chance of the other. And so you risk the reserves for an oil well. And the weird thing about it is, is that it may not work for a particular well, but if you're doing your work correctly over the course of a field or a year, it really comes out to be really indicative of what you're actually uh, getting out of out of a out of a particular oil play. So, um, but it's always I think I think petroleum is petroleum is a really interesting place to look at risk reserves because there's so much that goes into the final product. There's so many different ways it can turn out. Anyway, having said that, I went ahead and uh, wrote up a quantitative risk analysis example, and um, especially this method section, which is what we're gonna be working on this week. So, and then another, the Diaxis tool, this is for, um, this is for using, it's a, it's a way of looking at discourse analysis. So I did one example methods for a quantitative paper and one example methods for a qualitative paper. And so if you look at those examples, you'll see what we're talking about. But the main thing to remember is when you're doing your method section, which is only going to be maybe two pages, um, what you're really doing is you're talking about how you're going to research, how you're going to study your topic. You don't talk about anything particular to the work that you did. So you're just looking at, this is the way I'm going to view my stuff. These are the ideas that I'm going to use, or these are, you know, the ideas that you're going to use are probably going to come from the papers that you've read. So if you read all of that stuff, I think you'll have a really clearer understanding of what that looks like. So just as an example, let's just take a second here and look at um, the qualitative paper that we are discussing. She says like she can find it immediately, right? So it is really hiding on me. There we go. All right. Let's see if it came through. There it is. All right, I'm gonna pull this up. <laughs> I didn't know if I was gonna be able to find it or not. It was really, it was lurking in the background somewhere, but this is a, an example of a qualitative risk analysis paper. Okay, and um, so the important things I want you to see when I wrote this is, I said, this is what I'm going to do. So methods is always your, even though you may have already written a lot of the paper, already done a lot of the stuff, you just talk about what, you, what you're going to do and a little bit about why you're going to do it that way. So I just talked about this, this um, website called, or this little application called Kids Blog. And I talked about um, the fact that I use discourse analysis because I was talking about teachers and what they were saying. And then um, I referenced where I get that from. So the, in the introduction, of course, you don't have a lot of references in the abstract, you don't, but you do, um, but you do use that when you're in the method section. So most of your most of your method section, or maybe all of your method section, is going to be tied really closely in with those articles that you read um, and that you did the annotated bibliography for. So it's you know everything should tie together at this point. All right, so let's come over here again and finish this off. All right, so this week um, we have a another discussion forum, which is just to talk about uh, two questions about risk analysis in any in your field of interest, just something that's interesting to you or that occurs to you through your reading and then to comment on your classmates posts as well. But, um, and then there's also the method section itself, which 
I have as a due date this coming Sunday. But like I said, if you need an extra day or two, please let me know. I just always figure everybody in this classroom works for a living. And so it seems like maybe the weekends are the time when you would have time to do it. But if it doesn't work out that way, please let me know. And then just to close our discussion tonight, um, I just love this quote by Warren Buffett. Uh, we don't have to be smarter than the rest. We just have to be more disciplined than the rest. And of course, he's talking specifically about investing. But I think that this is a point about risk analysis in general, and it goes even back to uh, deep survival, is we anytime that you want to make a decision that has risk associated with it, you really want to analyze it in, in some sort of a methodical way. You don't want to react on emotion or gut because that doesn't really work in a repeatable and reliable manner. So anytime you start um, just analyzing, I believe the method, although it's important, is probably less important than the fact that you use a method, you know, and even if the method is, I read a few articles and these are the, these are some of the things they said. And out of that, then in your analysis, analysis section, you would say the people that I read said these things. And now this is how I'm putting those ideas together when you're doing the analysis but you don't put anything together in the methods you just talk about what you're going to do and then when you do analysis we'll talk about what you did <laughs> and then we'll come up with a conclusion or two so that's sort of the process do you have any questions for me about this at this point all right we'll see you just make it too easy on me so there we go all right well i'm going to stop recording that's it for tonight i want to reiterate i will be in our classroom next monday night it's your choice whether you want to be there or Zoom with me, either synchronously or asynchronously. Uh, we have two more weeks of class, and I am available all the time. So if you need anything, please do not hesitate to get a hold of me, and uh, we'll get you squared away. If you start to wonder what's going on or just need a little help or some advice or just want to talk about your stuff, give me a call. Send me a text. Send me an email. We'll take care of it. All right. Well, listen, everyone, have a wonderful night. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks.